Have you ever wondered how and why our earliest ancestors came to arrive in South Africa? You know, the ancient record, rock record of South Africa is so remarkably extensive that it has delivered a whole lot of paleontological icons to the extent that it is not possible to write a text on the history and development of life on Earth without referring extensively to the South African fossil record. And one of these icons is the rocks of the Karoo supergroup. Now most of you think that it's countryside like this that you need to traverse as quickly as possible when getting down to the sea for a holiday. But actually, the Karoo holds many secrets. And to a geologist, this is the area of the Karoo supergroup of South Africa. It covers two-thirds of the total area of South Africa. It um, comprises different rock formations. At the bottom is the dark brown rocks of the Dwyker group, which were deposited 300 million years ago in an ice period. Overlying that is the rocks of the Eka group, which are lighter brown, and they were deposited in a marine environment. And I say this because I want you to take note of it just now. Overlying that is the green, the rocks of the Beaufort group, which are packed with fossils. And then overlying that are the rocks of the Stormberg in white. And in those rocks, we find some of the oldest dinosaurs in the world and the oldest mammals as well. 300 million years ago, southern Africa was situated over the polar region, which meant that the landscape over here was one of ice caps and glaciers. But with time, as our continent moved northwards through plate tectonics, the Karoo Sea uh, began to uh, thaw out, the icebergs melted, and we got sediment being deposited in this sea from an a high mountain range situated off the southern coast of South Africa. And with time, this sea filled up with sediment more and more and created a land, uh, an environment conducive to colonization by earliest reptiles. Karoo sedimentation came to an end 180 million years ago through a period of volcanic activity as the continents split apart. And so, that is the story of the Karoo from 300 million years ago to 180 million years ago. So it records 120 million years of continuous sedimentation and we can look at the changes in environment and the changes in fauna over that long time. 300 million years ago, reptiles had just appeared on Earth. Up until then, the only animals with backbones were fishes and amphibians. And then just a little bit more than 300 million years ago, reptiles appeared and diversified into two directions. One direction giving rise to dinosaurs and lizards and snakes, and the other giving rise to mammals. And I want to talk particularly about the therapsids on the line leading towards mammals, because the, this group of animals is particularly well represented in the rocks of the Karoo. In the old, oldest rocks of the Karoo, we find very primitive therapsids, and as you go into the more and more younger rocks, they become more and more like mammals, and in the uppermost rocks, we find the earliest ancestors of mammals. And the therapsids were a very diverse group. The most abundant were the dicynodonts, these ones here, which came in forms the size of a meerkat up to the size of a li large rhinoceros. And I mention particularly the Dicynodonts because they're going to come up again. The person who studied the earliest therapsids from South Africa was Dr. L.D. Buenstra, who worked at Iziko South African Museum from the 1920s until the 1970s. And he concluded that the earliest therapsids in South Africa arrived in this part of the world from Russia, where the earliest therapsids must have been the ancestors of the South African therapsids. And he said they got here via overland migrations. Well, the story changed in 1962 when Roy Westhazen, an amateur paleontologist and a farmer who lived in the Prince Albert area, discovered this skull. Now, I know it doesn't look like much to you, but to me, it's really exciting. It was called 
you da signed on Oosthuizen now after Roy Oosthuizen because it was a new species that he had discovered and it was considered to be the most primitive dicynodont yet discovered. And the implications are big for that because it means that it's older than anything previously discovered in South Africa. In 1979, when I was an honors graduate at Stellenbosch University, I went to work on the rocks of the contact between the Ecker and the Beaufort group down in the Prince Albert area, where Roy Oesthuizen had worked. And I was lucky. The first day out in the field, I found that skull. Meter-long skull, you could see the teeth in the front of it, and the eye, large eye, and clearly it wasn't an Eudicinodon. It was something different. And this ignited a lifelong passion to try and find the earliest ancestor of therapsids in South Africa, because I realized that this was a Dynacophalian, and it was more primitive than the Dynacophalians known from Russia. And so I set off on a journey to find the earliest colonizers of land in Gondwana, therapsid colonization of land. I was employed first by the National Museum in Bloemfontein, and this man, John Neapuli, was my technician. We spent many years together in the field, and he was a very uh, observant person and keen to learn. And he quickly mastered the art of preparation of fossils. In fact, he became so good at this that he started teaching other people how to prepare fossils, and he won international awards for his tremendously good fossil preparation. But the other skill that John had was his ability to spot a fossil in the rock from very tiny little bits of bone sticking out of the rock. And he and I went together, collected more fossils from the rocks at Prince Albert, and we discovered a totally new fauna of animals, things that had never been found before. All of these animals in front on the screen are of new species, two of them called after John Nyapuli, uh, Australosidon Nyapuli, and Patronomodon Leopuli. And the exciting part is we found many specimens of Eudicynodon, better specimens, which corroborated the thought that this was the more, most primitive Dicynodon yet known. We also looked at the rocks, and um, geologists, by studying the rocks, can determine the sort of environment in which those rocks were deposited. And we discovered the shoreline of the ancient Karoo Sea and were able to map that out. And you could see it's marked in this slide over there, and the rocks represent a deltaic environment. So as soon as we hit the shoreline, that's where we started finding fossils of these early animals from South Africa. And so the project changed. It became, um, we involved many more people from all over the world, many more students from South Africa, all over the, and they then set out to look at and answer various aspects. And we started looking at things like dating of the rocks, looking at uh, climatic change by looking at paleosols and uh, stable isotopes and things like that. And we worked sequentially up from the shoreline, 2,000 meters up from the shoreline, collecting fossils at different horizons to look at biodiversity change. And we found in the rocks, which were dated at 260 million years, suddenly the fauna changed. All the large species went extinct, and only the few small ones made it through. Thank God they made it through, because they gave rise to us. So that was an important discovery from South Africa, and we were able to date it. But what we also discovered because I was working with people from around the world and from new discoveries in China, that the earliest therapsids and the most primitive therapsids were known from China, and then moved down to southern Gondwana to colonize southern Africa on the Karoo shoreline. And so, um, ladies and gentlemen, the significance of this research is that we've found a totally new fauna in South Africa that is older and more primitive than anything previously discovered in this country. It makes the time range of therapsids and our distant ancestors much longer than previously thought. And we now know that Southern Africa was the cradle of ancient mammals. 
And that being the case is also the cradle of humans today. Thank you.